a big focus of ours over the past six months has been focused on making Langchain more composable. And we've done that by introducing Langchain expression language, and we're moving towards writing more and more of our chains and agents in this way. Why are we trying to make Langchain more composable? One of the things that we saw was that when people tried to go from prototyping to production, they often needed to customize, sometimes heavily customize, the chains and agents that they were using, not just the prompts, but also some of the orchestration logic that was happening, whether it be the data pre-processing, the data post-processing, or even which connections were being made and in what order. And so by making Langchain more composable, we want to make it really, really easy for people to take an initial chain, which is constructed with Langchain expression language, and then modify it as they see fit. We also think that Langchain expression language has a lot of benefits that you get out of the box compared to just writing code to do this. So Langchain expression language is an orchestration framework. And so as an orchestration framework, we've paid particular attention to a few key points, which we'll highlight somewhat in this video and then somewhat in specific videos later on that make it beneficial to create your applications using this orchestration framework as opposed to just code. So we have a whole section on Langchain expression language in the docs. And a lot of these benefits are highlighted here. So streaming support, which we will have a whole video on, is that, that's been a huge focus of Langchain expression language. Streaming is super important for LLM applications, and we want to make sure that any chain and any agent that you construct using Langchain expression language comes with best-in-class streaming out of the box. Async and batch support are also really popular and necessary modes to run LLM applications in. And so we want to make sure that any application that you create uh, uh, with Langchain expression language, you can just use in those manners as well without having to rewrite code to support async or rewrite code to support batch. We've put a lot of emphasis on parallel execution as well. So again, LLM calls take a long time. Oftentimes, you want to parallelize things so that the whole application doesn't take a long time. And so we've put a lot of emphasis on making that easy to do. Retries and fallbacks, LLMs can uh, fail, the APIs can fail, uh, they can output weird responses. And so being able to easily attach um, fallbacks to uh, uh, either LLMs or even chains um, can be really important. Being able to access intermediate results is also really, really important. And so our, the, the, the Langchain Expression Framework, we wanted to make really easy where if, if, if you create a chain of a few steps and then you say, hey, I want, I want you know, the, the steps, the, the outputs from this step, or I want the outputs from this other step, you can get those really, really easily and, and maybe show them to the user or just use them to debug. And then also we highlighted this in an earlier video, but observability is a huge reason to use Langchain expression language over kind of like writing the code from scratch. We automatically log all the inputs and outputs of each step. We automatically log the sequence of events in which they occur. And then we have Langsmith, which is a great way to kind of see exactly what's happening. And so if you build something in Langchain expression language, you get all of that for free um, out of the box. There's a lot of uh, resources on Langchain expression language here. So we have this overview, uh, we have a getting started page that walks through uh, a basic example. Um, we have uh, a page on why to use Langchain expression language and comparing some of the, the code that you might write um, and, and how it saves a, a bunch of time to write it. Um, Langchain expression language, all the objects also expose a common interface. This is really nice because then you can interact with any object in the same way. And so we have, a, uh, we have a, a page on what this interface is. And then we've got a bunch of how-to um, guides that cover various uh, uh, different components. And then we have some cookbooks as well for doing common tasks like RAG, um, SQL DBs, agents. I want to walk through a, a quick notebook that just highlights some of the initial concepts in Langchain Expression Language. So, First, I'll just create a really simple chain that's just a prompt, LLM, and then an output parser that converts the, uh, I'm using a chat model here, so it's gonna convert the message um, from a message into a string. Strings are just generally easier to work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the prompt, I'm gonna create the model, I'm gonna create the output parser, and then I can join them together with this just pipe syntax. So I can do prompt, pipe model, pipe output parser, get a chain, and then I can use the invoke method. The invoke method is a standard method that all Langchain Expression Language objects expose. 
Um, and in this case, I'm passing in a dictionary because the prompt here takes in this key value mapping. So I'm gonna call the chain and I'm gonna get back a joke about bears. Now I can easily use other methods um, that the lane chain expression language exposes. So batch will run this over uh, uh, both inputs and it runs these in parallel. So it'll, it'll handle that under the hood um, uh, for you. You can control the concurrency and everything like that. I get streaming for free. So I can see exactly what's happening um, with this streaming step. That covers kind of like the basics. Again, this is a very quick uh, uh, overview in the spirit of time. Um, there's a lot more uh, 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 to cover around the different interfaces. For example, there are async versions of all of these, um, but I'm gonna move on to a different one, which is this idea of like a runnable pass-through. The runnable pass-through makes it really easy to keep on adding information to a dictionary that you keep on passing along. And so this is useful when you maybe wanna do a few different steps to add a few different keys of that dictionary um, in a sequential order. And so the primary example of that is with RAG. So with RAG, you have a question, then you wanna look up context for that question, and then you wanna pass the question and that context to an LLM for a final call. And so we can use a runnable pass-through to do this really easily. So here we have this Tavili search retriever. Here we have a, a prompt that takes in context in question. Um, we can first create a chain um, and we can see what it's like to pass in the context manually. So here we can pass in um, you know, a string as context, um, uh, the question what is Langsmith, and we can get back an answer. But now we want this context to not be passed in by us, but we want it to be fetched dynamically from a retriever. And so for that, we can use runnable pass-through. We can do runnable pass through dot assign. Assign just adds in an extra key. We can add in an extra key called context. And this context we can uh, get by first getting the question and then passing it to the retriever. The results are then stored as context and then we pass that whole thing to the chain above. So we can also reuse chains in this way really easily. And that's part of the composability aspect of lang chain expression language. So we can create this chain and then we can call it um, it will take a little bit longer because it's using a search API under the hood, but we eventually get back a result. If we want to see what's going on under the hood, again, because we are using LangChain expression language, we can take observe we can take advantage of the built-in observability. So if we go here, we can see the two important steps: the retriever, and so we can see what is Langsmith, and we get back a bunch of documents, um, and then we can see uh, this uh, call to the language model chat open AI. We can also take advantage of uh, some of the parallelism that's built into LangChain expression language. And so we can use a runnable parallel and we can do two things in parallel. We can make a call to the uh, language model, we can make a call to the retrieval chain that we have above um, that does this like search and then passes that to the language model. And then we can also just ask the language model to respond by itself. And when we can compare the answers of like, what does an answer look like if it's if it's using retrieval versus what does it look like if it's not? And these are executed again in, in parallel, which is helpful because there's multiple LM calls as well as a search call going on. And so it would take a while to do that sequentially. So here we can just make a really simple template, which is just the question. We can create a simple chain. We, we can then create this parallel chain, which has a retrieved answer and a simple answer. The retrieved answer calls the above retrieval chain. The simple answer calls the simple chain. And then we can invoke it with the question and we can get back a dictionary. And here we have a retrieved answer and a simple answer. And this is executed in a parallel as well. So if we go then to our Langsmith instance, we can see that we have these two separate things that are going on in parallel. So we have the retrieved answer, and here we have this retriever, and then a call to a language model, and then we have the simple answer, and here we have just this call to the, the language model itself. We can also stream things. So this is combining parallelism with streaming. And so if we stream back the results of this parallel chain, what we can see is that we, we get the, the results from the simple answer first because it's just making a call to a language model. It, it, doesn't have to, uh, it doesn't have to do the call to the API as well. And then eventually we start getting the retrieved answer and we can do some post-processing of this just to more easily kind of like build up the answers over time. 
we'll cover this more heavily in streaming and we can see that you know when you get two chains that actually start running at the same time the the, the tokens can be kind of like interleaved and so having these different keys um, the retrieved answer key and the simple answer key is, is a really easy way to distinguish them and pull them apart if you need to again there are a lot of resources that we've put together on lane train expression language there's definitely a little bit of a learning curve to start and so we are going to make sure to keep on having the high level interfaces to the various chains and agents so if you just want to use a conversational retrieval chain, we'll have a function where you can pass in a prompt, pass in a language model, and get a conversational retrieval chain. You don't have to worry about LangChain expression language under the hood. But when you want to customize things, we think LangChain expression language is the best way to do that. It makes it easier to do so because it's part of the chain, so you don't have to go changing the source code. And then you also get all the benefits of observability, streaming, parallelism built in for free. So LangChain Expression Language is something that we've been really, really focused on over the past few months. We've added more and more primitives, as well as more and more examples of how to use it. At the same time, we recognize that there's a bit of a learning curve, and so if you have questions, if you want to see uh, different, different primitives or different examples, please just let us know, and we'll absolutely create them.